Greetings, everyone. I'm Sharon Danley, and welcome to another discussion about child indoctrination and safety being seized by the transgender lobby and the infiltration of sexual predators in the drag queen story hours across the country. Today's guest is Jack Londoner from, that's right, London, England, and his discussion is about a boy named Charlotte. Greetings, Jack. How are you this evening? I'm absolutely fine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So the cats are away and we can have a discussion, is that right? They're, they're all asleep. They, they won't bother us at all, don't worry. No, okay. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now listen, Jack, you have a story to tell us about your friend's daughter. Can you can you share that with us, please? Yeah, so in late 2017, um, my friend's daughter, that they live in Wales, she did a post on Facebook and... Um, she was saying, OK, for all you people that call yourself non-binary, pansexual, this and that and blah, 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 you know, um, I've had enough of you or something. And then there were some people that responded and it was like a kind of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, bit of a bit of a hoo-ha, if you see what I mean. But I didn't know what she was talking about because I just thought, oh, it's just something that young people are, are, are talking about. And I did understand the language. And it didn't dawn on me till later until I fell into the whole sort of trans narrative of what was going on. And what was going on was that um, she'd gone to college to do a photography class. Mm -hmm. And um, there were these girls there that were, that were um, sort of, you know, claiming to be non-binary non and that sort of thing. And they would say things like that. They wouldn't call her by her name. They would call her something like sissy or sis. Oh yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, and um, they were telling us, "Oh, you're really a boy, really. You just don't don't realise." And um, she lost it with them, and she, she almost felt like um, the whole the whole of the college was like this. And this is in Wales, which is quite a work quite a working class sort of in the valleys area. So it's not like a um, you know sort of sort of middle class art school sort of thing. And um, so I just found that quite. But it did dawn on me until later what had actually happened, and she actually left the course. Because she felt like she'd been bullied by this, 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 this sort of, you know, trans identitarians sort of mm -hmm. thing, basically. Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, she still, yeah, she still had guns, but it was just a, such a shame that she had to leave the course. And um, so that's what happened there. Then, um, come uh, early 2018, I was um, part of this Facebook group which was about human evolution. Yes. And uh, biology. Yeah. And um, we were talking about um, how complicated it is for, for um, you know, obviously human females having birth. And and it was in the news about this one particular hospital that was having more that was having higher um, infant mortality rates and deaths of the mothers to do with birth than the rest of the country. And I thought, well, this is interesting because I knew what I knew the hospital. I knew what, what part of the, okay. the, the, the country. And I've been there and I thought, well, it wasn't like something out of the Victorian era. So what's going on here? And what it was was because this hospital wasn't doing the same amount of cesarean sections as the rest of the country, you see. So the, the, figures, the figures probably matched what they were before the hospitals were doing cesarean section, if you see what I mean. And um, so I... So this wonderful conversation and, and someone posted, oh, because of, you know, the cesarean section that, that, that we're getting them, um, children born with bigger heads. And um, so it's a very good conversation. We went on for a couple of days and I posted this picture that showed the difference between the male pelvis and the female pelvis. And it was obviously very different. You've got your childbearing hips, obviously, yeah. on the female got your pubic arch which mm -hmm. is wider on the female one and the male one and everyone's saying that's interesting and then I linked this is a, this is where it all started I linked to a story on Wikipedia to do with the Long Island serial killer um, so at Long Island in the States they, they'd uh, dug up a load of skeletons and they dug up the skeleton which was named um, Jane Doe number six and it was a skeleton in the dress but when they got it back to the police station, the pathologist saw the saw the jawline, yeah. thought, right, okay, lifted the skirt, saw the pelvis, and said, "This is a man." Mm. So, so my point was, I said, it just goes to show you, whatever you do to your body, you'll be able to tell your biological sex from your skeleton. Right. The next the next day, that 
I got a, my first ever community standards message from Facebook. This remark has been removed. And I just thought it's because I'd linked to an external site. And then the whole of the thread was taken down. And I checked with the group admin as to what happened to the, to the, to the thread. And he said, um, oh, someone reported it as transphobic. Oh. And I, I, I'd never heard of that expression before. What, what transvestites? And so I mentioned this to my wife and she said, oh, gosh. This was like early 2018. And she said, go and watch Madeleine Burns. Oh, yeah. And that's where, it's, that's where it started. Mm-hmm. See? So um, I started, started to watch her videos. And um, the first one I saw of hers was uh, non-binary bullshit. Oh, yeah. I don't, yes. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely, absolutely crying with laughter at this. Oh, yes. Because she's, yeah, yeah, she's obviously a fellow North London lass. And um, I just figured, what is this nonsense? What is this? What is non-binary? And um, just, just, I just, I just can't, I'm just, just really confused. And two days later, the Guardian published an article about, you know, non-binary is a new thing and had these two two young lasses that said they were non-binary, that declaring themselves as neither female or male. And I shared it on Facebook, so what a load of nonsense it is. And at the end of the day, if they dig up your skeleton in the future, they know what sex you are. And this caused a ruckus. <clears throat> I had people, you know, responds people i know respond angry faces and everything and this conversation went on for the rest of the night and um when it turns out you know i get i get some angry you know emojis from my uh, family my sister and all my brother and it turns out that my niece now thinks she's a boy oh so and i thought oh gosh and uh, then it kind of i thought oh God, and I just thought it started to roll. It started to, you know, it was everywhere. It was in the news every day that, you know, so many, so many people are thinking that they're born in the wrong body for all of a sudden, where they where they wouldn't have done this, you know, 10 years ago. They would just been playing video games or something like that, basically, online. But it just seems to be very interesting. It's just suddenly happened. So, uh, so from that, that conversation, my friend... Um, Jenny, who I went to school with, she got in touch with me, um, um, and she doesn't normally engage on Facebook much, but she private messaged me and said, "I'm so thanks, um, Jack, uh, for talking about this because, uh, you know, I'm at my wits' end." And what it was was um, she was vegetarian and vegan for years and had five miscarriages, oh. and uh, so the doctor said I said suggested it to her as well I said it might be diet related uh, but the doctor told her so she started eating fish and the, she conceived and then had her first daughter and it was all successful oh, her first okay. yeah early child so imagine what that's like when the daughter comes home one day at the age of 15 this is Charlotte yeah and um says I'm really a boy oh. yeah so she said to me what's going on I said okay well let me speak to her. So I spoke to Charlotte, well, Charlie at the time, and um, I actually went down to um, to London and met them and uh, spoke to her. And it was really interesting because um, she's always been a loner. She's always been artistic. She's always had her hair short, which is fair enough. So does my wife. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so that's just a just a preference. There's nothing to you know. You, you know, if you don't wear makeup and you have short hair, you're still a woman. Oh, aren't you? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So and she said she was doing. Um, she's really into um, manga and sort of anime, and she was um, doing all these drawings and submitting them to Deviant Art, which is a website for artists. And someone said to her, "I noticed that all your characters have short hair." She goes, yes. She goes, do you know why that is? I said, well, I, I, I guess, uh, well, I've got short hair myself. And this obviously female said, it really means you're a boy. Oh. Honestly. Oh. And, and I've, I've seen another, I've looked this up and there's there's another case. I think it's on the American Conservative website or something basically. And it's, it's so similar. It's, uh, so you go in there and then... Then she said, oh, yeah, you're really a boy. Go on to YouTube, go on to Tumblr. And then you get this sort of self-affirmation sort of thing. Oh, yeah, no, they're right. Yeah, you've basically, you've basically been brainwashed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so, so the mother's, mother's at a wit's end trying to tell her, 
you know, this is rubbish. They're obviously arguing. The father is hardly there saying, oh, well, as long as she's happy, that sort of thing. So I sort of step in as the kind of unrelated uncle and, and talk to her. And I said, look, there are loads of women out there that have short hair and don't wear makeup. Loads of supermodels do it. And I, yeah, yeah I told her about Lambert Ripley from Alien, the mm-hmm. first characters to, to not be glamorous in a, in a sci-fi horror. And uh, I showed her um, Beth Givens from Porter's Head, um, Agnes Dean, the model, Karen Devengi. And she said, I didn't know these women existed. Oh. So I said, well, there you go. And um, then she desisted overnight. And it was a week before she was due to see the Tavistock Clinic to, uh, oh. you know, yeah, I know. So they might have put her on, well, she was 15 at the time, so might have been too old for, for puberty blockers. But I think you have to wait till 16 before you go on them um, cross-sex hormones. Yes. Yeah, so so that, so that was a good story. Yeah. And... Uh, from your birthday, I got a bunch of flowers um, from both of them with the, with the, with the um, you know, a, a note from, from Jenny saying, thanks for giving me my daughter back. Oh. So uh, I know it's, it's mm. I mean, I just, but, but what I learned from that was getting into the mind of the, of the cult think that she'd been, you know, tried to led to led down, if you see what I mean. So by by these these people, these people are also obviously women, young young women that think they're boys, and um, so there, there there seems to be a real push, doesn't there, um, to to indoctrinate rather than to let children explore and, and, and the, the myriad ways that they do explore as they're growing and finding out who they are and with good yeah. parent and and I'm what I'm thinking too Jack is that when kids have loving parents around who set healthy boundaries and say, yeah. and those healthy boundaries sometimes mean saying no you can't fill in the yes. bank. Kids need that. And when they're not getting any of that, then they're absolutely ripe to be indoctrinated by anything that comes along that shows them attention. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a, um, I, I think it's Jonathan, is it, had it, had it, he's a psychologist or something. And I think it's, uh, and also Stella O'Malley has uh, done a few books about this sort of thing. And you get the impression um, we're not parents, but we just get this impression that uh, that the, the parents now are very different to my parents, who who, mm-hmm. who never pretended to be your friends. We get on, yeah. but they were your parents. But now it's like I just want to be my kid's best friend, and you know, don't call me dad or mum. You call me by my first name and that sort of stuff. And you know, and that's like you say, it's those those boundaries are gone then, haven't they? So. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and uh, you know, I, th- I think that that plays a huge role in what is happening. Because yeah. I don't think that if kids were, were ha- having healthy uh, home lives, uh, that they would be as easily swayed as what they seem to be. And, of course, the, sw- the, the indoctrination is fierce, isn't it? And for parents, yeah. for parents who... Um, you know, want to kind of belong with everybody else. They don't want to be the outcast. They yeah. there's a tendency to go along with the madness too, isn't there? Yes, and um, you've you've also got to look at. I mean, looking at it from North America, um, you got you got to follow the money. So you've got this a- affirmation period, which the Dutch don't do. I mean, the, the Dutch have had self ID for for a long time, but I don't forget hardly anyone uses it. Um, so what they do is, so if a, if a child goes in with, you know, certain gender dysphoria, they don't give them puberty blockers or hormones. And if it's straight away, they do like a year or so of like actual therapy. Mm-hmm. And uh, so and you end up talking them out of the phase, if you see what I mean. <clears throat> now, if you did that in New Jersey, uh, you could be arrested for, um, what do you call it, um, conversion therapy. Yeah, they, they're calling it that manufactured name that they used for this, which they yeah. n- know that people will will uh, link to the old conversion therapy that was pushed by the churches. Uh, yes. You know, and, and so, and that's what they get people thinking that that's what it is, when in fact it's not. It's talk therapy. It's reasonableness. It's helping introduce some common sense and to really explore and really look at yeah you know yeah. yes i mean it's, it's very different i mean how do you convert how's it conversion therapy if you're stopping someone from being converted <laughs> you know, so. exactly 
but but what what this is the big problem because the tea is part of the rainbow umbrella and it has nothing to do with the first three letters of the acronym it's not a sexuality it's a lifestyle and um if you criticize the tea people will suddenly think that oh you're homophobic or something like that basically mm -hmm. the fact that my my bet most of my best friends are lesbians who, who, who want to get the L out of yep. this because because of the the the, the sort of vitriol that they've received from the from the from the men in the cocks and frocks, as I was gonna say. Uh, yep. Excuse my language. No, that's but, um, in English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's and um, the, the bisexuals are getting uh, grief because they're not gay enough. Um, the gays don't um, sort of go out, you know, sort of parade about it unless you're at Pride and you're dressed up like mm. a leather pup. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know what's going to be left. Is it going to be the adult babies and the fairies? And then you know, it's like a. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's going to be. But the thing is, I think the thing that's so scary is that you're absolutely right that lesbians are being thrown under the bus. Uh, they're being pushed aside for uh, trans females, you know, yes. m m men in frocks, as you said. Uh, yeah. or, 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 and they're they're the um, they're, there's it's like they're taking over. There's also I heard a um, a new fashion show that's going to be just trans only fashion show well i see having uh, you know background in the beauty i can industry i can see where this is leading you yeah. know pushing yeah. women aside pushing models aside female models aside for trans models you know it's yeah. all women aside and in the and, and 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 the pedophiles are knocking on the door really hard to get that that uh, minor attracted person onto the alphabet uh, uh logo uh yeah. and, and, you know so push women aside bring this stuff in we, like we are really in trouble in the bigger mm. things and and the fact that the trans cult has taken hold across the world so fast in the last couple of years shows that uh, big money behind this pushing the agenda. Yeah, well, it's the, it's it, it's the Western world, isn't it? I don't think it's happening in uh, Syrian sort of no, you know, migrant no, camps that's, that's... or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. So it seems to be. I mean, we all will say that um, it's a, like a sort of joke in the, in the UK that. Um, we get this. We get this rubbish from North America. <laughs> you know, it all ends up coming over. You know, and it's sort of, yeah. but it seems. It seems to me that it's that it's it's been really pushed more from Canada than the U.S. Well, Canada so, seems to be way ahead of stupidity. Uh, you know, with, with respect to this sort of thing, like with our Bill C-16. And when we look at what's going on with uh, Morgan uh, Osier and uh, uh, Jonathan Yanov in BC. Oh. It's, yeah. ins it's insane what's being allowed to happen. Just the very fact that Yanov has been allowed to bring 16, and I think plus, uh, complaints against the Human Rights Tribunal because of, you know, they won't wax his privates. Um, that shows the absolute stupidity. And, well, and let me put it another way. Militant ignorance of of the people in charge here in Canada, and yeah, we're yeah. really in trouble. We are really in trouble. Yeah, a similar thing happened. Um, we're well, not in the UK, but in Ireland, yeah. and it was last year. And what it was was um, so so with hair, but you got barbers, which are for men, yeah, you know, haircut men, and you've got hairdressers for women. That's right. And um, um, what they tend to do is, um, so they might be in the same street, and they will they will have a pact with each other that you know if any women go into the to, to the barbers, he will send them up to the to the hairdressers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so this guy running the barbers, this young woman coming, an FGM comes in, and she wants her hair cropped in there, and he says, "I'm sorry." So he recognises that she's obviously female straight away. And said, "I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not trained to to cut um, female hair." And also, he's got a pact with the hair the, the hairdressers that you know if he takes any of their custom, he, she could fine him one thousand euros or some of that basically. Oh. So so he's thinking, "Is this a plan? You know, is this yeah. trying to test me?" Yeah. And um, she said, "What? What? I just want to. Just want to. Just want a crop." I said, sorry, you'll have to go up the road for that. I don't do, you know, I'm not trained to do female hair. I'm not a female, I'm not a female. Anyway, it's all it's all very amicable and that. Yeah. But then 
this, this lass said that she went into therapy, he went to court, and he got charged, he got fined 5,000 euros for oh. refusing to cut her hair. And this was like in the news about a week or so before, before the Wax My Privates story came out. So, well, well before oh. I heard it, anyway. Yeah. So, mm. ridiculous. And I got into trouble. I posted that on Facebook, and there was someone, a Canadian, said, Oh, you know, you should have waxed the, the dude's hair, man. I said, Well, no, because one, he's not trained to, to cut flip the, you know, flip female's hair. It, you know, it's different, basically. And two, you might have thought that it was a plant that, you know, mm-hmm. from the other place. And they weren't having it. And they thought, these guys thought that that was the worst crime. And something else that had happened that week, which was um, so, so he gets to try and uh, uh, find uh, five thousand euros for this. And the same week, there were two two lads that hijacked a bus, drove it for nine miles in the country, uh, nearly knocked someone over, and they get charged fined seventy five pounds and two weeks community service. Now they've done something that could actually kill someone. Oh yes. Whereas, whereas the barber has just refused to cut a female's hair because he's only trained to cut male hair. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about. So everything. All this is about is like, a, I'm really the opposite sex. I'm going to go into the opposite uh, sex's changing room. I'm going to go and swim in the opposite sex's mm-hmm. uh, swim and b- b- baths that sort of thing. And I'm going to go into the, the place where. You know, the opposite sex get their hair cut to, just to affirm and prove that I am now the opposite sex. I know, I know. It, 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 this is the thing, and when and I believe that the media has a major part to play. Oh yes, oh, because yes. when they refer to biological males in sports as an example they refer to them as a her when people read the articles they get confused they think it's a female when in fact it's a biological male and so this is this is the way they're indoctrinating the masses and the masses aren't paying too much attention except when it comes knocking on their own door or the door of their or their niece or their granddaughter or something and it will, it will, because it's growing exponentially. I, I understand, and don't anybody uh, hold me to this, but I, I understand there's a rise of about 4,000% of young women uh, uh, changing their sex. I think it's in the UK, and it's yep. a sharp rise here in Canada too, uh, and the US. But the thing is, I think that what everybody needs to do, and is horrendous as it is, is to watch, and there's a video is available to watch a surgery of a young oh, of a young yeah. woman having yeah. her breasts mutilated off this is what's happening absolutely and uh, after my experience obviously hearing about my niece and my, and my friend's daughter i i um started looking into all this at the, the ftm so I was, I was more concentrated with the ftm side you got posy parker more interested in the male side that sort of thing that's what she, she, she was doing so i was doing the, doing, doing the, the girl side and um i saw my doctor um my gp yeah. um out, outside of surgery and um i said to her and this was June 2018. I said, um, have you done many referrals for like gender dysphoria over the years? And she pondered. She goes, um, she's an Asian, Asian doctor. yeah." Right. And she goes, um, I've done one in 25 years. But this year, since January, I've done 15. <gasps> and I said, were they all girls, all teenage girls? She goes, yes. And I said, all white female you know teenage teenagers and she looked she pondered goes yeah it was like it was like penny drop said yeah yeah Yeah. so i said yeah and uh and this goes this is this is really really interesting because there's a book out called um strange contagion um which is about this guy that moved to a town in the states uh i think near new mexico or something basically and within the first week that him and his wife were there uh, at the young a person killed himself on the train track. Then within like a few months, more people did it. Oh. So it's like a social contagion. But what, yeah. he flags, yeah, what he flags up in this book is um, the bulimia outbreak in the 1970s. So, so bulimia, so this is, um, nutritionist um, wrote about bulimia because he noticed that uh, bodybuilders were doing it. So before protein drinks, bodybuilders will gorge themselves with protein and then vomit that sort of thing, you know, to you know, to, mm. to keep the fat off. And uh, 
This then got into the is it the DSM? Is it the? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever yeah. number. But, no. Yeah, so it was number three at the time. It got into that. Then it gets into a magazine, and then it gets mentioned in the media. And within ten years, between seventy nine and eighty nine, there was a quarter of a million cases across the Western world, mostly white females, and that's a social contagion that spread without the internet. Yeah. So there is a connection. I've had a conversation with a, 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 a lady um, I know called Rebecca, and she said there is definitely, she noticed a connection between eating disorders and dysphoria. There is definitely a connection, you know, because, um, yeah, and that's that's fascinating. It's fascinating. So, mm -hmm. so, but my point is, when I did the, so I did the, um, so you, you know about the Tavistock? Clinic yes, in, uh, yes I do. maybe yeah. you can just get, let our listeners know uh give the, give them a just kind of an overview of what tavistock is right okay so um so in london north london there were two, two clinics uh, uh, private clinics next to each other called the portman and the tavistock and they dealt with um psychology that sort of thing and uh, the portman dealt with anyone 16 age 16 plus and the Tavistock, anyone younger, they ran into financial difficulty and they merged. And now it's now they're part of a, the NHS trust. And uh, at Tavistock, they have um, the first ever clinic, which is GIDS, which is Gender Identity, Identity Development Services. And um, so that deals with, you know, anyone with, uh, uh, you know, teenager up to the age of 16, obviously. Um, with uh, gender dysphoria and in 2006 there were only 49 referrals in that one year and then over the next few years it, it creeps up a bit 51 52 60 once we get to 2012 2013 it skyrockets it goes into the thousands and um, by uh, 2016 for that year it's gone it's 14 1400 so it's gone from 49 in 2006 to, to 1,400, you know, per year oh. in, yeah, yeah, I know, in 10 years. And uh, so I did a freedom of information request to say I want to know how many 10 to 16-year-olds were referred between January 2017 and December 2018, so two years, yeah? yeah, and they got back to me. They got back to me and said, "Yeah, we're looking into this. We might have to charge you for it." But I had a couple of people that were going to help me with, a, you know, if, if it was, yeah, you know, with the money to pay for it because I wasn't working at the time. Mm -hmm. But as luck would have it, they they didn't charge me, and the figures came through. And even I was shocked. It was honestly, it was, uh, and I also got them to break the figures down by obviously by by sex, male and female, and also by ethnic that you know is would be black white blah, blah, blah. right anyway if you go male and female within the two years it was 3099 girls compared to 979 boys in two years oh i mean that's a huge jump that is huge that is, yeah yeah that is i mean that was uh, even i was shocked about the rise in that i thought my goodness you know, so so, and it's good that I did it because I said it to Posey, and she said, "Thanks for doing this." And um, Stephanie Davis Sarai runs um, Transgender Trend um, mm -hmm. down down at uh, Brighton, and she said uh, she was quite shocked by it as well, actually. And I said, uh, and then it started to get in the news. You know, there was the vicar that um, quoted the figures when he was in the conversation with mermaids, which is the trans teen tra trans. Trans children sort of charity group, that sort right. of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they they go into schools and you know preach to teachers that all this cod science. They're like, they're like the Scientologists, but with a, a yeah a, a pink a, a pink uh, um, blue and white sort of flag basically. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all cod science. And um, this vicar was questioning that because he actually studied biology, so um, so he's questioning their stuff. And they were trying to shut him down. They're trying to shut him down. So no, no, we can't have this conversation because I knew what he was saying was true mm -hmm. yeah and um he breaks down in tears it's one of the most heartbreaking recordings that you can ever hear you know it's, it's on youtube and yeah. my wife my wife who's a very strong person even she she cried at it because oh my goodness yeah i know it's just shocking but i think that we started something by getting those figures in from the tavistock to show you know yes. what's that going on here. that doesn't mean to say all the referrals go on to 
blockers or uh, or hormones, but it just shows the rise in you know young females saying I'm really a boy. Yeah. And what's what is driving that? That's yes. the question. Mm-hmm. What is driving it, and what can we do as family and concerned citizens do about it? Right. Okay. So there's a couple of theories about what's driving it. Okay. Is the um, I've heard I've had quite a few conversations. Uh, obviously, most of your females, mothers, you know, aunts, that sort of stuff, and they say the the fact that boys can access porn so easily and yep. you know obviously degrading stuff that, that there's such a pressure on girls they think it's easy as, as julia beck, uh, beck said uh, um you know these girls think it's going to be easier to go through life as a boy and i don't blame them she says and that's that's one that was one thing mm-hmm. um how we how we cope with it well yeah. Well, that's 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 a big one, isn't it? Yeah. It, so um, yeah. it is, and 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 what I'm finding, Jack, too, is that there's so much divisiveness happening. Not not only just in this community or just this little, uh, not little, this situation. I mean, there's divisiveness in politics and in in in, in religion and everything right now. And the thing oh, yes. is, you know, while you know, w- 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 there's many of us that have different viewpoints on a number of other things. Can't we come together just for the kids? Can't we can't we leave our religion, our politics, our you know, whether we like red or blue or whatever it is aside and 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 come together for the kids and be united? You know, uh, the, the LGB community that's not doing anything, the, the 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 men in community, the straight men that aren't doing anything, the women that aren't doing anything. You know, everybody needs to help step up and protect and save these kids from this abomination that's happening in our governments and in our schools and in our libraries and in our hospitals you know but it's the government yes. it's our governments that lay down the law and they're the ones that that set the tone and they're the ones that that i think from my perspective need to be addressed yes well the, the, the thing is because it's because like i said because people connect it with homosexual yeah being homosexual the t that that, that yeah. politicians and media people tread very carefully even comedians even comedians yes. that have had established careers there's only like two comedians that i know of uh norm mcdonald uh the canadian the canadian guy and doug stanhope is american who have ever made any sort of trans gender drive jokes basically i mean even ricky gervais has been a bit yeah right yeah you know, backwards and forwards and so they're just they're just a bit um they're just a bit, well you know if i say something will i will i get another show you know you know will i get another oh, yeah. commission that sort of thing yeah so and and, and people yeah. who are working too like uh, teachers and things if they don't oh absolutely they yeah, don't yeah teach the curriculum they don't have a job you know if you i mean look at the women in in canada Lindsay gray uh shepherd and megan Mur- yeah. Who have been, you know, removed from Twitter uh, because they misgendered, uh, you know, so, so somebody. I mean, this is insanity. And yet, you've got Yaniv still, and more, and and Osher still up on Twitter, harping away on on insanity. You know, it, yeah. it, it's so so people are afraid. So maybe we can leave it here, Jack, as as to say. Maybe this is something for all of us to think about. What can we do to come together and leave our differences aside, but come together to to save the kids? I think we're seeing that, definitely. It's, um, I mean, you know, uh, I'm going to quote Harry Miller, Harry the Owl, because he said... Um, uh, you know, he said to, he's the last person to think that he'd ever be friends with radical feminists, but he's so convicted over this. He's such, you know, but, but, and to, it's the same for me. It's like I'm, I'm, I have no faith, but one of my finest friends now is a Catholic, and I respect her faith for it. And we don't talk, we don't, we don't, let's, we don't see our political differences or our faith differences. Right. We we are united on. We just need to stop this. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and uh, it's for me, it's the anti-biology thing that's really annoying because I studied oh. biology at school mm-hmm. and college. I should have done a degree in it, but I'm going to think about doing it again. Actually, tr- tr- trying to go for one because I'm not having people rip up, you know, what's set in stone with biology in front of me just for a a fad. 
You know, when people say, when people say, oh, biological sex is a social construct, it doesn't exist. What? Oh, how, oh. how are you there in front of me saying that biological uh, sex doesn't exist? How, how, how did you come into the world? Yes. Yeah, you know, I know. I it's like it was like a, it was like one what one guy um, who said he was an atheist and he, he told me to burn in hell and I said well you be, you don't believe in hell in the first place so <laughs> am I going to burn in it? <laughs> Good for you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stupidity in people. It's like uh, it's just it's just so, it's almost like they're sort of the blind led by the blind. Some, I know. Sometimes, so, I yeah. know. But, no, but but I definitely think that is that we are seeing, especially in the UK. I mean, I had a um, a friend of mine. She's in Australia, and um, she said that she admires Brit, the, the British women in, in this whole thing. She said that you're the fear, they're the fiercest women in the world, basically, and so they're standing up to this, you know. So mm-hmm. and you know that's that's good. I mean, I've made some lovely friends. For yes. This, this too. So uh, you know, mm-hmm. and um, we're you know, it's uh, and I've had some laughs. Um, yes. Some of the some of the things that, that that mostly women have said have been very funny. Yep. It's it's all it's also uncovered the um, the horrible. Male incel trolls that have joined the, you know, yeah, they are oh. absolutely abysmal. Uh, they, they are awful. Yeah, they they certainly are, and um, you know, it's uh, it's really really tough when you're having to deal with the the uh, unbelievable misogyny and. Mm violence and bullying that comes from this 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 cult uh these yeah. activists and, and enablers it it is it is just it's harrowing and i and i can understand why why people are afraid to speak up but we can get the strong ones like they do in, with, in the animal kingdom let the strong ones um yeah. you know we'll stand out front but you know it's nice to turn around and see somebody there you know what yeah, I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that I think that's a human thing. Someone will will uh, will you know lead and say something, and then that that in, then therefore inspires other people to do the backup. If you see mm-hmm. what I mean, so to support that person, I think that's just a just a basic human human thing. Not everyone. I always used to say about um you know um my wife and I have these great conversations, which we're going to start doing podcasts. You know, Jack and Jackie's uh, around oh, the great. table conversation. Yeah, yeah, and we had some fascinating conversations. You said uh, the other night, I said, uh, can you imagine, the, you know, cavemen and women arguing about pronouns? I said, well, they wouldn't be able to, I said, they wouldn't be able to pronounce them. Ugh, ugh, you know, that sort of thing. And then, yeah, it's last week. And you know, can you imagine, because the, the whole thing was that the cavemen used to drag the women by the hair, that sort of thing. That, that, yeah, but they did that now, the wig would come off because it's a trans woman. So. <laughs> Yeah. See, humor, but, see, humor, humor is very important oh, in this because it's so absurd. It's, yeah. it, it is absurd, and you're absolutely right, Jack. I I agree with you wholeheartedly that humor is needed. Well, I'll tell you, I'd be looking forward to to listen listening to the Jack and Jackie show. So do uh, keep 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 me informed as to when that's that's going to yes. uh, yeah, yeah. take off. Definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. We got the mic and all that sorted out, and uh, so we're just gonna have. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, a load of subjects, and they might be all sorts of things. They might be unsolved murder cases, or you know, Wonderful. films and that sort of thing. So, Wonderful. so it's be great because you know it's so good to you know get off the screen, and just talk. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people we're we're in such a connected world now. So many people are lonely, and I think. This is what's um, driving this sense for identity. It's almost like a, a real life video game avatar, which always needs an upgrade. Which you yeah, know, yeah, it's a, uh, a good point there, Jack. You really do. Uh, well, listen, uh, Jack. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this evening and sharing your your your, your story, your experiences. Uh, it, it's really important, and. Uh, um, you know, wish, wishing you and us, all of us, the best. And uh, we'll just keep connected and uh, 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 keep sharing and keep helping each other. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So- we'll, do it, we'll do another one. And also, I'd like to say, you know, obviously, a homage to Magdalene Burns, who passed oh, away. This week. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, a, yeah, a star yeah. was lost. But a star was, will always, star yeah. was lost. And I, you know, when I lit my candle for her in church this morning, I... Uh, oh. Jack, I feel it's the strangest thing. I feel like I've lost a second daughter. Yeah, 
And, I, you know, uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I know it's strange, isn't it? Because yeah. it's like I know so many people who met her, and I've only ever seen her on, you know, because I wanted to meet her, but then she got ill. You see, yes. um, she, she had her first, um, she had a wake craniotomy, yeah. and um, then she had a because of that, she had a stroke, I think, down the right side. So she did a video, uh, she's trying to get her hand back, so she couldn't even, you know, sort of type that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. she was treating it like sort of very light hearted because, and that's the irony, it's like one of the strongest brains, the greatest brains in the world, because she studied physics at Edinburgh University, and that's pretty impressive, yeah, you know, to be plagued by nature. Yeah, and it just shows that's. That's what nature does, and you, you know it's it's unfortunate, but at the same time she's proved that you know nature is nature, isn't it? Basic biology, you know, uh, you know it wasn't the man that brought her down, was it? No, it, it was, wasn't. It no, wasn't. No, no. Oh, well, thank you, Jack. And on that okay. note, um, have a, a wonderful balance of your evening. I think yeah, it's evening for you. Um, yes. And um, and and it was a pleasure speaking to you. And we'll be doing this again soon. Okay. That's- Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. Thank you for watching, everyone. And thank you, Jack Londoner, for your participation today. We greatly appreciate it. We'll see you next time.